So, I have left Oxford, and that's completely okay. <laughs> it's not. I am excited to look back on some of these videos, um, especially the ones that include kind of like the cityscape, because I'm really missing it right now. But I'm also just super excited to show you guys the lovely little bookstores that I ended up spending a whole lot of time in. And I think that it's interesting to look back on these videos when I took them, when it was like the first time I went into Blackwell's, when I ended up studying there for like a couple of days, just like for hours and like ordering one drink and just putting it next to me and not drinking it. Actually, I have a complaint, but I'll get into that in a second. But basically, I'm just gonna go through the different bookstores that I went to in Oxford. I tried to hit as many as possible. I think I only ended up hitting like four of them, which is really not that many. But I think there are four that are really worth the trip. And if you're in Oxford and you're looking for some fun things to do and you're into reading, you're into books, you wanna even pick up a few here and there if you can fit it in your luggage, I think that you should definitely look into these. So I'm gonna start off strong with Blackwell's because it's literally one of my favorites. Actually, if I'm gonna do a ranking, I think that Blackwell's gonna be at the top because it is my favorite, let's be honest. Um, it has a really cute aesthetic. The buildings outside, iconic. On the tote bag, the tote bags, seven pounds. That's ridiculous. Tote bags in the US are like $40 in most places. I should definitely replicate this book tour in New York City. I think that having this little goal, especially the first couple of days when I was in study abroad and I didn't have that many friends the first couple of days, obviously, um, because I moved there, literally knew no one. Um, I ended up making some great friends, but um, <laughs> I think that having a little goal like this and even inviting some friends along, you'll see, um, was a good way to kind of like get myself acquainted with the city and have kind of like a goal. There's actually multiple Blackwell buildings and I went into both of them. Yeah, here's me kind of just like looking through some of the books. I was thinking about getting Babel, but obviously hardcover book, tiny, tiny suitcase. <laughs> and it's already overweight. <laughs> I loved looking at kind of the books that you see when you first come in. And also these UK covers were just beautiful. I think that you'll notice a bit of a trend of me just like in awe of the graphic design of some of these covers. Oh, another thing that I really liked that this bookstore did is that it had the little suggestion cards and it, they had the people that were the employees writing like entire paragraphs about the books that you could read and there were so many of them. It's a huge, huge bookstore so they have like three levels and each level was like insane. Okay, another thing that I definitely recommend picking up if you're there is one of their blanks. So these are kind of like blank notebooks that have the covers of old books and then the Blackwell stamp on it. I actually ended up buying three of them and I have some of them with me now so I'm gonna show them to you. They're just like the cutest things in the world and they're the perfect size. I think the ones that I got are like literally the perfect size. Um, and they come with this thing that says about blanks. Um, and yeah, it's literally just blank pages. It's completely unlined, which is actually something that I really appreciated. Um, and then they have the little Blackwell's crest on it, which is really cool. They had this copy of If We Were Villains that I really, really, really liked. Um, it was just the best. I love seeing um, different covers of my favorite books. Like for normal people, I also saw that cover, which I had known about because the normal people and the Sally Rooney book covers in general, I'm always looking for alternatives of, because um, they're some of my favorites. I also kind of went to see like the Conversations with Friends one, um, and I loved the little note that was left with these, so just great seeing what other people think of your favorite books. Yeah, and then I saw Happy Place by Emily Henry, which I actually brought with me, and I was super tempted to buy this like alternate cover version. <laughs> then right across the street, you have uh, another Blackwell's. It's in a very different looking building. Oh, and then this is kind of like the city center. You can see how cute this area is. Definitely more of a touristy area if you wanna get kind of like a better sense of the city, though. You definitely need to spend some time walking up and down the street obviously. It's great. There's a lot of great things nearby, surrounded by colleges. I went into the second area and it has a mixture of like manga and board games. Um, I was kind of on the quest for a Sunny Angel, but they did not have that, which was super disappointing. Um, but otherwise, it was just kind of like a cool place. Um, they had a lot of graphic novels and fantasy, which was really cool. <laughs> Okay, next a couple of days later, I went into Waterstones, and Waterstones was a place that I was kind of avoiding because it was so huge. I mean, both of them are super huge. Wait, side note. Okay, so both Blackwell and Waterstones have cafes. 
Cafe in Waterstone has a lot of really good benefits. Super, super cheap. They have all the drinks I want. I don't drink coffee. I have a chai latte or a matcha latte. They have both of those things in Waterstones. And it's like two pounds cheaper or a pound cheaper than um, Blackwell's Cafe, which is Cafe Nero. Cafe Nero, though, in Blackwell's is significantly more comfortable. They have really nice chairs. You can see kind of like the vibe and the energy in here. I spent a lot more time here in my last couple days because it was also just nice being in that like area because it looks out on kind of a commerce street. It is uh, still, it has like an open, it's more of an open street, so it's not as clustered with people. Um, and it has kind of like a different energy in there. You don't feel like you're like in the city <laughs> when you're in that cafe. The Waterstones Cafe, it overlooks this huge intersection. And every time someone crosses the street, I was so concerned they were gonna get hit by a bus because all of these cars go so fast and the people are just dashing through. It's really stressful to watch, but it is also a really nice view. So there's pros and cons to both of them. The biggest thing that is not in Waterstones benefit, it doesn't have a bathroom and it doesn't have chargers that work when I was there at least. Um, besides that though, Water Waterstones is super comforting. It does feel more like a Barnes and Noble than I would say Blackwell does. Blackwell kind of feels more like the Strand where it has all these levels and it has kind of more of an indie bookstore feel even though it is like technically a chain I'm pretty sure. Um, but in the same way that the Strand is a chain, but like it's not really the chain. Support the Strand, by the way, they need it. Um, but Waterstones definitely has like this bigger Barnes & Noble type energy, especially because you see it in London and other cities in England as well. Yeah, I'll kind of let you enjoy some of the books that I was looking at and um, yeah, it's beautiful. You can see all the levels of it. <laughs> Okay, next bookstore on my list was this super small bookstore actually. It was called The Last Bookshop, or just Last Bookshop. This bookshop is in Jericho. It's just this small little vintage bookstore and it has some crates outside with like $3 or three pound or four pound books, which is super great. It was, it's in more of a suburban area, so like right off of Worcester College. So you keep going straight up into Jericho, which is where I actually lived while I was there. Um, Jericho is super great. If you're going into Oxford for like, like more than a day or even if you're just going for it there for a day and you want to get some food or you want to like see like more of the local scene i definitely recommend going to jericho it's just like the cutest cutest place and if you're going to oxford for study abroad and you're there for a certain like a longer amount of time or if you're moving to oxford i don't know definitely spend a good amount of time in jericho because the people are just so nice the cafes are super great um, and I just really enjoyed my time there. Um, but yeah, this bookstore was beautiful. Had a lot of really cool copies, different like print versions of like classic books that I really liked. And it had some records, so that was always a plus. The last bookstore that I ended up going into was the Oxfam Books bookstore. I didn't end up buying anything from here and I actually didn't end up buying a book from most of these places except for Blackwell's because I ended up buying some of those books to give as like gifts and the notebook that I got for myself. But I, the closest place that I got to buying something was definitely Oxfam because it was cheaper and they had kind of like thinner books that could fit in your suitcase so I definitely recommend going there. I recommend going to all these places, um, but Oxfam was definitely one that I passed by every day and I thought to myself, I really have to go in here every time I passed it and I was so happy that I was. Obviously the people in all these places were super nice, but this um, bookstore really felt like a real independent bookstore. Um, I just looked at, loved looking at all the vintage books and the covers, they had some really good stuff. I saw this really nice copy of uh, Sylvia Plath's uh, poems that I was thinking about getting um, and then it just had like an interesting cover as well and I really like the way that they sectioned off the books um, it's always interesting seeing in all these bookstores the way that they um, the way that they display different fiction books regarding like theme or nonfiction books talking about kind of like different like social issues whatever um, and I really liked the way they did it in uh, the Oxfam bookstore as well 
Um, I think my ranking is gonna go Blackwells, mm, the Waterstones, okay, in, okay, all right, <laughs> let's focus. If you have one day at Oxford, I think that you should definitely do Blackwells. If you're a book person and you have one day at Oxford, I think you should do Blackwells, um, Waterstones, and then Oxfam, because you can kind of make your way through the center of the city that way. Because Oxfam is next to the bus station, maybe you can get there first, and then you can move on to Waterstones. Don't spend as much time in Waterstones because they're basically gonna have the same thing as every other place. And if you're coming from somewhere like London, maybe skip Waterstones because you can find it somewhere else, but go to Blackwells for sure. And if you wanna make it to Jericho, definitely stop by the last, last bookstore. You might as well, cause you're in Jericho already, which I think you should be doing. If you're going to be in Oxford for a couple of days and you're looking for somewhere to study, I think that if you drink coffee, Cafe Nero in Blackwells is a really great sp spot. If you want like that bookstore energy, you don't want it to be too loud, you want it to be comfortable, you want chargers, you want a bathroom, you want to be there for a couple of hours and you're okay drinking coffee or a hot drink because they don't serve cold chai lattes or and they don't have matcha lattes. So if you're okay with all that, definitely there. If you have the capabilities to have a fully charged computer, then go to Waterstones because Waterstones just has a little bit more space, a little bit more of a view, um, and it, it does the job. And the drinks are cheaper. So I think that if you're there for a long period of time, definitely alternate between the two of them. And obviously if you're there for studying at Oxford like I was, the libraries are also a great resource, but I think that sometimes you just need a cafe and both of those really satisfy that need. Um, and then if you're just looking for like some good books for cheap prices that don't feel like you're in like, um, like a bookstore chain, then I think Oxfam and The Last Bookstore are definitely your spots if you want to find like an obscure book. I feel like that's the place to get it or a book you've never heard of before and you kind of just want to rely on the people in there telling you what's good. Definitely do that. <laughs> But anyway, that's kind of my book tour that I did. Um, I had a great time there. I had a great time in these bookstores and I definitely want to return to them and return to Oxford in general. Um, I think I have a little bit of footage left that maybe I'll put together something and share a little bit more of Oxford with you guys. But besides that, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed my little tour. Let me know if you end up going to any of these bookstores and what you thought of them. Um, and if you were studying at Oxford and you studied in any of these bookstores, let me know. Okay, see you next time.